Ashley Mayo and Mike Beer here going to take a look at a race on Saturday at Aqueduct. They have the New York Stallion Series. We're going to look at the two-year-old males in race number nine, which is the Great White Way. Seven furlongs on the main track and a really big field here. Actually, it's a main field of 12 with those two also eligibles. And uh, not a lot to go by for some of these runners, Mike, but a couple of others in here have plenty of race day experience and some nice performances under their belt. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's kind of a wide open race here. Very so, Some very lightly raced horses in this race. We have some first time starters, some maidens taking a shot here. But listen, you put up $500,000 for New York Reds at the end of the year, they're going to show up. Yeah, I would show up for that sort of money myself if I had a New York bread. But we'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projections here for this big field. And we see a couple of horses maybe to be forwardly placed early on. The number one, Antonio Venice. I feel like he's coming out of some of the faster races. He draws the inside. He's been forwardly placed. And also we see the 11, Solos Fury, who disappointed last time out, maybe the muddy track and stretching out with a combo that was a little too much for him. But in his prior efforts, he was very close to some fast paces. I can see this pace being fast. Antonio Venice probably has to go from the rail. Uh, you mentioned Solo's Fury. Listen, he, he got involved on a very fast pace last time going a mile, and he paid the price. Uh, but he, I, don't, I don't think he would hold that race against him. I, I do think there's a chance this pace does get pretty fast, though. And if it does, it helps the likely favorite here, uh, the nine BD Saints. I think it's interesting to note seven furlongs. A lot of these horses maybe have gone five, five and a half or six, and this is going to be a test. A couple others, though, maybe cutting back in distance. We'll kick it off with the number one, Antonio Venice, who was fourth last time out in that New York Red Stakes race at Finger Lakes. Now, that's back in September. We haven't seen him since. His other races have been at Belmont and Saratoga, and I feel like he's had some good races, but recently the last two, not the best. Uh, yeah, agreed. He's he has run okay, and he's got plenty of, of early speed. It's a it's a pretty big question though. I mean, you, you mentioned this is a seven furlong race. You have some horses cutting back and some stretching out. It's it's an underrated thing to take into account, man. Going seven furlongs, some of these horses don't want to do it, especially a horse like this, who's all of his races five or five and a half. He's going all the way out to seven here with speed to his outside. I think it works against him, but I don't think he's impossible. And he's run some good races. The number two, Solo Empire. Now, he's by Solo Mini, who's well represented in this year's edition of this race. I think he's got four offspring here. This one raced on debut at Aqueduct just a couple of weeks ago on December 2nd, faced his New York bred rivals, and he simply split the pack. He went off at double digits. Now he's obviously going to have to step up and stretch out in distance. Yeah, one of the horses just taking a shot at a big purse here. Um, I will say, though, for a horse who's going to be a big price once again, you would think in this race, it's just, it's at least worth pointing out, uh, not only did he bump into a blowout winner last time, but that was a super speed favoring track. And this horse just didn't break that well, and he got outrun early. I thought he actually ran an underrated race that day, but he's obviously got to take a step forward here. Trainer Rudy Rodriguez will send out a first-time starter, the three heavyweight champs, who's also by Solomini, who stands for 6500 Not a small purchase price, though, when you think about that, Mike, 290000 back at OBS in April. Yeah, they paid up for this horse. He, he did breeze the bullet uh, nine and four uh, back in April at Ocala. It was a really nice work. They paid up for this horse. He's got a little pedigree. It's hard to to decipher because the dam, you know, is only okay. She's got one foal who could really run, but he was a, sort of a synthetic and a turf horse. And her other three foals to race just were terrible. They're 0 for 25 combined. I, I don't know. This horse has a little pedigree and did look fast working, though, uh, before they paid for him. The number four, King Floyd, will take a look at his most recent performance. He dropped from state bread made in special weight ranks to the $30,000 level. He was forwardly placed once again, going a mile over this muddy track. But he ended up doing what he needed and was able to draw clear of this field, beating his other eight rivals. Yeah, this is that the day we were talking about with Solo Empire, who ran earlier on this same card. Mm -hmm. This was an intensely speed favoring track, and this horse just got right up close to the pace. He takes over. He's going to edge clear at the end of this race. I thought he took advantage a little bit as he, you know, obviously took a step forward here. So I, I just wonder how good he actually is. And he's obviously up in class for this. The five profitability now joins the George Weaver barn was previously trained by Jonathan Buckley based out of the Finger Lakes. And he's got two in the money performances, sort of similar performances where he's just kind of, kind of plotting in the late stages, but he was second last time out going six furlongs. Yeah, exactly. I, I sort of, that's funny. You, you just said that I looked at him the same exact way. His two races are almost identical where he just wasn't quite fast enough to keep up with the pace early. And then he ran a little bit through the stretch. Um, I think there's probably some talent here. I don't mind the trainer switch obviously to, to trainer George Weaver, but just another horse in here feels like they're taking a shot and he's got to improve a lot. 
And I will say the one thing is we talked about some other horses. Maybe seven ace works for him based on that running style. It was finishing well, but uh, I think he's one that hopefully will sit off the pace and get some of that pace help that we talked about. We think it could be a fast pace in this field. The sixth livery central is next. This one out of the Patrick Quick Barn. Two second place performances, both at the six furlong distance. I think, though, overall, at least he's shown a little bit of something so far. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is the horse. I, I thought he actually ran okay first time out. He, he didn't take much money that day. The winner of that race, though, looks pretty good and has a chance, you know, to, to be all right, to, to be a stakes quality New York bred for sure. This horse was fine that day, and he ran fine again last time. Again, that was that speed favoring muddy track. He got closer to the pace. He was just no match for a, a, a very uh, easy winner that day, but he ran fine. The seven, the big torpedo, is going to try something very new. He's going to switch from a turf race, move to the main track. We'll take a look at his debut, which he went off at a, he took some respect in that race. Decent yeah. odds, nine to two were the odds on him. And uh, you see Beach Cruiser, who is in the lead, is going to remain in the lead. But the big torpedo does at least make a nice late run here on the outside. Yeah, I thought he ran pretty well in this race. Um, did get a good trip overall. I don't think you're going to you know, watch this back. I think he had some kind of big excuse, but he's a first time starter. He looks very professional through the stretch in this race and he just can't get to this horse on the lead. I, I thought he ran well. And more than anything else, he's got the pedigree to switch surfaces here. He's got a lot of dirt in his pedigree and he's got a lot of distance in his pedigree. You can see he's by Big Brown and on the mare's side, a little empire maker there. And honestly, the works, there's some really nice works at Belmont out of the gate over the training track. So I, I agree with you. I think the dirt shouldn't really hinder his chances. I think he can only take a step forward based on that debut. Now, next in the field, another first time starter here, uh, Woe Hop. This one out of the Bill Mott barn. Slew of works. I'm not sure what to make out of this horse. It's a $42,000 purchase. And uh, it's interesting to see Bill Mott, though, debut in that $500,000 race. Yeah, one of these horses is just going to take a shot at a big purse. Maybe they think um, he's all right, and so they, they don't mind running him here. You know, I don't know what to do with horses like this. I, he doesn't have a ton of pedigree. I don't even like to bet first-time starters in maiden races, let alone in, in races with a half-million-dollar purse. The number nine, BD Saints, is the horse that probably has the most impressive resume. We'll take a look at the Sleepy Hollow last time out over the muddy track, going a mile horse has no one beaten kind of turning you know turning these late stages and, and is actually only has a couple of rivals behind him but he's going to gear down here just cannot you know get to the top horse in here who was three to five it makes up a ton of ground yeah this is this is a really good horse that wins this race and bd saints had tons of trouble at the start i mean just totally lost all chance at the start and actually does really well to finish as close as he does at the end of this race this pace was fast it certainly set up well for him but this horse really ran in here. He also ran, I thought anyway, deceptively well in his only other dirt startup at Saratoga. He just had no chance with the trip he pulled that day. I don't know. This horse to me looks pretty good. And he's clearly the horse to beat, in my opinion, in this race. Absolutely. Next in the field, the number 10, Solo in Paris. Another offspring of Solomini who didn't show much on debut. Took a slight drop in those last times to that open 20 maiden level. I thought both performances were good, but really, we look at the step up when this one, one was able to draw clear by six lengths. The buyer increases dramatically to a 71, but I don't know how much I want to read into that, Mike. I, I don't know how much I do either. Um, if nothing else, though, it, it's a figure that at least gives them some kind of chance in this field, so I'm not surprised they're going to take a shot at the big purse here. We'll see if he can do it again. I probably wouldn't bet this horse, um, especially considering the projected pace of this race, but he certainly ran well last time. Just wonder if a couple others are maybe faster than him. Does he get a trip where he's sitting just off of it? Could he get a minor share? That's probably the, the best case scenario I see for Solo in Paris. To his outside, though, is the number 11, Solo Fury. This one of the Jeremiah Englehart barn. Two solid performances to start, and really when you look at the Sleepy Hollow, gave way, was forwardly placed, and had nothing to offer. Yeah, just I, I think just way too much working against him last time. We just saw the the stretch run of that Sleepy Hollow uh, when we were talking about uh, BD Science. This horse, he tried to go with the heavy favor in there, dueled that horse to the top of the stretch. He was no match, and he got really, really tired in there. I would give him a pass for that one. Um, he, he ran really well in his first two starts. And running out the main body of the field is the number 12, Brick Ambush. This one trained by Danny Gargan. We'll take a look at his second career start where he's able to graduate. He draws clear in here by two lengths. Now, it wasn't a huge field. It was a field of eight. But I just thought the way that he draws clear in this race, to me, he, he did all the right things for a second-time starter. I like the improvement that he showed as well. He just didn't have any speed at all in his career debut when uh, Solo's Fury ran away from him. He had way more speed this time. He got a perfect trip in this race. I'm not going to deny that. But he also took a pretty big step forward, and he's just one of those horses you don't have to worry about him taking on, you know, the seven furlong distance. You already want the mile. Cutting back is probably perfect for him. 
And I'll just quickly mention there are two also eligibles, the number 13 Palace Boss and the 14 Kaz Mega Bank, both first time starters that could certainly shake things up, but hard to endorse if they were to draw into this field. So nice field for the Great White Way. And I don't think I'm going to be shocked here. Mm -hmm. I went to the number nine in here, BD Saints, just based on the resume. I think from what we've seen so far, uh, this Colt has at least shown the most and he's been pretty impressive, especially last time out. Yeah, agreed. It just feels like there's a lot pointing to him here. I mean, he's not, uh, you know, the most interesting pick in the world, but it just feels like a good spot for him. If he can run as well as he did last time, he's supposed to be tough in here. The only other horse that I was really interested in is the seven uh, switching surfaces here, the big torpedo. We mentioned the big torpedo does have a nice pedigree also for the main track and some nice work. So I like this horse as well, but it's nine, seven, 11, three for Mike. It's nine, 12, seven, 10. I kind of, you know, talked about solo in Paris. I think you can get a piece at best here at hopefully a big price, but that is race number nine this Saturday at Aqueduct, $500,000 on the line. Best of luck.